Hello YouTube, beautiful day today. Um, sorry it's been delayed uh, in my videos. However, uh, I've been really busy. So I sold my Jixxer 600. Yes, I know the feeling. I sold it in a very, um, yeah, yeah. Let's say I had to sell it, <laughs> and uh, because of this, the Triumph um, Street Triple Seven Six Five RS model. Uh, this is a twenty eighteen model. I saw somebody list uh, and get this for quite cheap. Um, I looked it up to see what's wrong with it and all that. Uh, so I went to see the guy just to see what's wrong with the bike. Why is he selling it cheap? And after talking to him for a while, um, he looked like he's going through some hardship and all that. Uh, he needed the money uh, to pay someone. Um, Yes, bike has an issue, we'll talk about it soon. Um, but to start with, I had no intention of buying this um, because I'm more of a sports um, lover, uh, like a sports bike. Not that this is not a great bike, but hey, she's a bit dirty, but we'll clean her up. Um, so, yeah, I spoke to him, uh, looked like I kind of felt like I needed to do something for him uh, because this bike was causing him additional stress. Um, so the only way I could help because I didn't have money at the time was uh, to list my Jixxer and sell it and take the money and pay it here. So I listed the Jixxer quite cheap, uh, $5,000 or $1,500 cheaper than what they would have gone if I had listed it uh, on on a proper marketplace I listed on Facebook marketplace and then just um, within five hours it got sold and the guy came like an hour away 10 30 at night to pick it up uh, because it was cheap that's what he says anyways oh so cheap why are you selling it cheap so I told him the story that I need the money uh, to help someone out uh, and get this off their hand and just release some of the stress for them uh, so that's what happened I ended up with this triumph uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not regretting this to buy. I just took it out for a spin. Uh, so, bike starts and runs sometimes. Um, took it out for a spin, and that's just what I cost. Uh, this thing goes good, but I just hate the wind. It was too windy. Maybe I need a bigger screen or something. And yeah, once you, once you go quicker, the wind, the wind becomes really annoying. But in the corners, I'm really surprised it handled really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, yeah, I was keeping up with the Ducati uh, 959 quite easily uh, and had plenty more to go. I just didn't want to push it anymore. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. You know, I quite like the height, ride height on it. It's quite cool. It's not like the other cruisers. Um, other than that, it's a nice bike. So, we'll get into the problem. So the problem with this bike is that they went for a service to one of the local dealers here. And uh, right after 400 kilometers or something, it developed an issue where it wouldn't start properly. I had the same issue just, just before when I took it out. It wouldn't start, it took me a few goes. It does start eventually, but it takes a few goes to, to do that. And the problem is, and that's what I discovered as well. And I went to the bike shop and asked them for a report because the other guy had had enough with them and it didn't work out. Uh, so I went to the bike shop after I bought the bike, of course. I told them I bought this bike, I need to report that they had done the test. So they told me they found coolant in the exhaust here. Um, and then it smokes for a bit and then it dismounts the space. So I brought it in. Um, 
as you can see I've removed the shield I removed the exhaust here uh, just lift the, lift the pipes just lift the headers here the, the, the cap the cat is somewhere here so it's kind of hard to see on the other side and the cat is not removable easily unless you cut the exhaust off of course uh, so I took I took the I took the exhaust out lift the bike sit for about five days or something around here um, so I let the bike sit for about five days and then I went to start and I could definitely see uh, cool it coming out of out of the exhaust and I was having trouble with starting as well uh, so my theory is to see that the head gasket gone and so did the bike shop say the same thing um, so either the head gasket is gone and it's leaking between the ports, the exhaust port and the, um, the coolant uh, through the head gasket or the cylinder head is dead, um, cracked, sorry, there's a crack in the cylinder head and it's leaking by that. Uh, surprisingly once the bike seats up the smoke goes away and it's not leaking, it does, the temperatures go up a little bit, not too bad, I mean the fan kicks in then it drops back down so it looks to be functioning okay. I rode it for about 100 kilometers to see what, what it does, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, definitely an issue. Uh, we'll look into it and yeah, hopefully do some videos on finding what the issue is. So, what are the add ons on the spike? Got some EvoTech. I'll read the news. The EvoTech uh, sliders, the Triumph sliders here, uh, some CNC bottles. More we take stuff. Even this one is used. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like it's great. It's probably been down or rubbed against something. I'm not sure. Not complaining. Uh, I wasn't in it to buy the bike in uh, good condition or anything like that. Uh, the nice, uh, well, the guy was really nice. He replaced the chain before I picked it up as well. But the chain was gone. It was very old. Uh, Ties are not too bad. Pretty Angel GT tunes or something. First time experiencing those, so it's not bad. Got Holland Shaw, that's stock, I think. Ah, Evo Tech. Um, tail tidy. It's pretty strutty. It's really, really well built. So quite like that. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, the passenger foot pegs are removed. It's a seat cowl. I haven't got the passenger seat for it. Yet, we've got some tank pads, trying tank pads, and uh, I think he has a smart smart mount for the phone. I think this was his own company, so he used to make them. Uh, I don't know if he make them anymore or not, but he used to make them. He gave me uh, one for the phone, so I can slide my phone. There's a video of this. I'll probably put the link in the description uh, where he has just ridden this bike with a, with a phone attached to it 240 kilometers an hour recording with his GoPro uh, more CNC CNC machine uh, visors for the brake yeah uh, the clutch is a bit noisy when you start it um, but as soon as you pull it a little bit the noise goes away I'm not sure if that's normal uh, but once I get into the engine I'll have a look at that maybe the clutch is worn or something it has done 20 something thousand kilometers 22,000 or something and it has some carbon fiber heat guns with a quick shift as well Oh, uh, so the coolant level was too high, so I've removed some of the coolant and of course the exhaust eat the rest of it. Uh, so I've topped it up to the correct. It just needs to be above the minimum and below the maximum, somewhere in the middle. It's fine. Uh, I'm pretty good service manual. What else is there on the bike? Yeah, that's a pretty nice bike. Rides all right. I think the clutch is slipping as well, so that's why I think it's old and it's rattly. Yeah. 
also he was running liquid molly here i did an oil change the video of that will be loaded sometime soon i did i, I did record the video uh, that day uh, i have no experience with liquid molly but that thing looked like really really runny so maybe that's why it's got its name liquid molly from uh, and the quantity was too much so maybe that's what was leaking around it here and it was splashing all over here but with the new oil and oil filter replaced uh, i'll take it for a spin sometime uh, nice sunny day today but i'm too busy i thought i would just do a quick video and upload this uh, and we'll do some rides on this and upload if it lasts of course I don't know how long it's gonna last, but I'm not worried about it. I've already uh, priced up um, the head gasket and cylinder head as well. So it's gonna cost me somewhere between two and a half thousand dollars to four and a half, five thousand dollars at least. That's that's a that's a minimum. Depends if the head is done, then it's gonna cost me more. And while I'm doing the head, I might as well just do the piston rings and have a fresh engine. Um, We'll think about that later. Or it could be just a head gasket, replace a head gasket and you're done. So that's going to cost me two and a half thousand dollars. A few days of work for the bike shop and plus the parts. I think the parts alone was eight hundred dollars and they're going to charge a thousand dollars a day to strip it and a thousand dollars to put it back on. Yeah, it costs a bit, but hey, um, it's not too bad if I get away with two and a half thousand dollars, but I don't think it will be that much. I think it will be a lot more. And then by the time you add GC and stuff, so you're talking about minimum of three thousand dollars a week. Uh, if if I get it fixed for run under four k, I think it will be a good deal. If it ends up over four k, uh, let's say I spend five five and a half six k on it, uh, then that that would be just standard by the price of the bike because it has done uh, a few more kilometers than the ones that I saw. On on sale um that's why that's where i'm coming from so yeah i could be i could have saved some money i could be if the problem is uh, not too bad i might make some money off it but that's not the intention the intention was just to help the, the guy just um, get rid of some of the stress uh, that the bike was causing him because he was using it as a daily um, so I, I think he's got something else for now. So it's a one less problem to deal with while he's going through all the hassle of life. Yeah, now there's a bike. Um, we'll do some videos of it, running it and all that, but some other day. Um, I just want to share. I sold the Jixxa and I got this. I'm not regretting it because it was a, it was a split. Well, like few hours it took me for a few hours to make the decision but uh, made the decision on the day listed the bike the bike went on the same day uh, next morning I picked this up so the whole thing took from seeing this bike and meeting the guy to buying the bike just overnight uh, so yeah pretty quick decision uh, but it wasn't about buying the bike so so maybe it, that's why it was so easy normally i take my time choosing the right bike uh the h2 is um still waiting for its tail tail light um sorry i mean the tail tidy for it i've been i've ordered it but it's on the way uh, due to covid things staying, take forever to reach us here in new zealand uh, for example the parts for this is going to be eight weeks minimum given that UK is in lockdown and that's where they they're gonna ship it from the bike shop say to expect at least eight eight weeks and I'm not gonna waste eight weeks of the sun uh, I'll ride it until it stops and then I'll trailer it home and then just strip it down I know that's not a smart idea but hey that's what I'm gonna do worst case scenario I'll put another engine uh, locked up online a few engines uh, just need to find someone reliable to get a good engine from them, uh, maybe from a crash, crushed bike or something. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Uh, peace out.